go ahead and look at the solutions to the Chapter 7 practice problems. The first question that we were asked to explore is number three, airplane seats. It reads as follows. On an airplane that is two-thirds full, 20% of the passengers are boys, one-fourth of the passengers are women, one-eighth of the passengers are girls, and there are 68 men. How many seats are on the plane? Well, one sub-problem that immediately comes to mind is determining what portion the men currently represent because you're given the percent or fractional amount of all the other passengers. So whenever we're trying to find a fraction or percent, it's always out of one or 100%. So on this two thirds full plane, note, I put one full plane, I meant two thirds full, but it doesn't matter, it still represents the whole right now as we're talking. Together, that one-fifth boys, or 20% boys, the one-fourth women, the one-eighth boys, and whatever portion are men should equal the full 100% right now. So I went um, and solved that equation that I've set up on the screen there for x, which is the portion or percent or fraction of men. And we find out that right now the men are comprising of uh, 17 fortieths of all the passengers that are on that two-thirds full plane. So what we would like to know now is, all righty, well, what is the plane's number of passengers total when it's two-thirds full? Well, how can you figure that out? If we know that the number of men is 68 and the portion that they take up for all of the passengers on this two-thirds full plane is 17 fortieths, we know that 17 fortieths times all of the passengers on the two-thirds full plane would equal 68. So we go ahead and we solve that equation and we get that 160 passengers are on board this plane currently. That comprises of two thirds. Well, you can think about this logically. If that comprises two thirds, if you split that in half, that is 80, right? So you would just add one additional 80 to figure out the rest to make it full. Or you could set up another equation asking the question, what is the full amount of seats? And we'd let W equal the whole plane. So two-thirds times W equals 160, you would get W equals 240. So thinking through it logically or by asking another question that would enable you to set up an algebraic equation, you can get to that result. The next question is number nine, Fargo. It reads as follows. Tiffany drove from her home to Fargo, North Dakota in two hours. On the way back home, she drove 54 miles per hour, and it took her 14 minutes longer. At what speed did she drive on the way to Fargo? So in terms of sub-problems, one initial problem that comes to mind is what is the distance that Tiffany traveled? Because that's uniform no matter her speed. We know that rate times time equals distance. We know that her rate going home is 54 miles per hour. We also know that she traveled 14 minutes longer than she did on the way there, making it uh, her travel two hours and 14 minutes, or expressed in terms of hours would be two hours and 14 over 60. When we multiply those together, we get that she traveled a distance of 120.6 miles. The next problem is what is Tiffany's speed on the way to Fargo? And that is the final answer as well. Well, if rate times time equals distance, then rate equals distance over time. The time now is two hours even. So 120.6 divided by two gives us 60.3 miles per hour. The next question that you're asked to solve is number 11, slow time clock. It reads as follows. The time clock in a factory is running slow. When an hour passes on the time clock, it has actually been 64 and a half minutes of real time. The worker gets paid $11.80 per hour, really works an eight hour shift is measured by this clock. Beyond an eight hour day, the worker gets paid time and a half for overtime. How much extra pay is the worker entitled to if he works one week, five days in these conditions? So let's look at some possible sub problems. Number one, how many hours has the employee really worked each day according to this faulty clock? And then another sub problem that would accompany that is how many hours has that employee really worked over all five days? So for the first portion of this, um, let's transform that 64 and a half minutes to hours. So that extra four and a half minutes is really 0 0.075 hours. 
and when you multiply that by eight, that gives you 8.6 hours per day. So we need to have it all in terms of hours. So they're really working 8.6 hours per day times five days. That employee is really working 43 hours for five days and is entitled then to three extra hours of pay at the time and a half um, rate. So the second question would be, okay, how much regular pay is owed to this individual? Well, it's 40 times 11.8, uh, and that would give us $4.72. And then how much extra pay or overtime? That would be the 17.7 times three. Where am I getting 17.7? Because we take that base rate of 11.80, we divide it um, in half and add that. So they get the full amount plus an extra half, which would be $17.70. Multiply that by three, and that would give us $53.10. Quite frankly, I didn't need step two, um, how much regular pay is owed. I could have simply determined 43 minus 40 would give me the three extra hours. Or as my second um, subproblem, it could have just been, what is the rate for time and a half? Um, that really was unneed. So just wanted to point that out. Okay, the last problem, grazing business part one, and this is number one on page 194. It says, Cliff runs a grazing business. He will bring his flock of eight sheep, 20 lambs, five goats, and a llama to your field, and they will mow the weeds by eating them. For one job, the lambs ate the weeds on two-fifths of the land. The sheep ate the weeds on 34% of the land. The goats ate the weeds on one-fourth of the land. And the llama ate the weeds on the remaining 20 square yards of land. How much land was mown? Okay, so the nice thing is we know how much the llamas ate. So if we could determine what percentage corresponds to the amount that they ate, then that means that you could take that percentage, multiply it by all of the yardage, and you would get just what the llamas ate. So I'm, I'm being forward thinking here, thinking of the end knowing that if I could have the percent that the llamas ate, I could then determine the full amount of land that has been mowed. So that means that I need to have some subproblems that will allow me to get to the percent that the llama ate. So the first subproblem that I'm thinking of is what percent did the llama eat, which means I need to add up the percents of the other animals transforming any fractions to their equivalent percent. So the sheep ate 34%, the lambs ate two-fifths, which is 40%, the goats ate two-fifths, um, oh, no, excuse me, the goats ate one-fourth, which is 25%. When we add those together, we get that 99% of the um, land has been mowed by the sheep, lambs, and goats, meaning the llamas just take care of 1%. Now that we know the percent that corresponds to how many square yards of land they have eaten, we can set up a, uh, an equation to solve for a full amount of land. So how much total land is mown based on the llama's information? We would do 0.01x equals 20, divide that off, and we get 2,000 yard, square yards total um, has been cleared by these animals and their grazing. For a bonus for test two, you are going to attempt, if you'd like, the grazing business part two problem on page 195. So you will need this information and you'll build on that to solve for a bonus opportunity, grazing business part two.